Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to look into verse 2, but we're going to go back to verse 1 for context. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with, with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love. So what is it to walk worthy? Well, first of all, he goes to in all lowliness and meekness. Uh, Jesus said in uh, Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So lowliness, humility. Paul speaks of himself as being the least of the apostles and not even being worthy to, of being called an apostle. But he said, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. First Corinthians 15 verses 9 and 10. And in uh, the last chapter, Ephesians 3, 8, he referred to himself as less than the least of all the saints. Uh, the Bible puts a, a strong emphasis on being humble, uh, but the world doesn't look at that as a virtue. But here Paul is saying part of walking worthy is being humble, walking uh, in lowliness, all lowliness, thinking of others more than yourself. And it's a contradictory. It, it, it doesn't make sense for a Christian to be self-centered. Uh, that's that's that shouldn't be. Um, the more you're growing in Christ, the more you're going to be Christ centered and other centered. You're going to be serving other people uh, for Christ's sake. You're going to be serving Christ as you're serving the people as well. And so another thing, meekness or gentleness. This same Greek word is used for an animal that has been tamed, whose uh, their great forces are brought into submission and obedience to the trainer. So really it's power under control. Meekness means mildness or gentleness, but it does not mean weakness. There are two men in scripture who are noted for being meek, Moses and Jesus. Whenever you see Moses coming down from the mountain and, and breaking the Ten Commandments written on the stone tablets, and when you hear what he said to his brother Aaron and to the children of Israel, would you call that meekness? God surely looked at Moses as meekness, as meek. When Jesus went in and drove the money changers out of the temple, was that meekness? It certainly was. It wasn't anger bursting out that was uncontrolled. He took time to make the whips. He he, uh, he had his power under control. The world has a definition of meekness, and that makes it synonymous with weakness. But the Bible calls meekness a willingness to stand and do the will of God regardless of the cost. Meekness is bowing yourself to the will of God. And again, meekness is another thing that the world may not look at as a virtue or something to be aimed at. Uh, that's someone's aim in the world. But again, Paul, Paul mentions this as one thing that is to walk worthy. And um, another thing, with long suffering, it is a spirit that never gives up, never concedes defeat, belief in the ultimate defeat. So even if you, the things are looking bad, it's looking like you're being defeated, you just believe and it's patience with men you know um long what long suffering is not is having is on the outward being patient but inside you're having a short fuse and 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 your your heart isn't uh, your heart isn't patient but whenever as you grow in the long suffering even your heart becomes long suffering paul amplifies in uh, 1 corinthians 13 Love bears all things, believes all things, and hopes all things. So bears all things. Um, Long-suffering. And then, bearing with one another in love. And the Greek word for love here is agape. And in the Greek, there are four words for love. Eros, which is passions. Phileia, emotional love. Storky is like a family love. But here, it's agape. A word, um, love on a spiritual level, really. And one of the definitions of this is in, of love is in, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verses 
4 through 8, the love chapter. It's where Paul gives the definition of this love. As he says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. So this is the agape love. 